Scott always does the radio show with me. Yeah. Uh, it's Scott. Yeah. <laughs> I can do any things, you know. Um, and on the phone, we got Ray. How you doing, Ray? Good. How are you? I'm fine. We have a special guest here, Ray. Do you want to try to guess who it is? Uh, I have no idea, guys. I couldn't even venture a guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to give a clue? Do you want, no? Well, we can start talking. And okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, does the voice sound familiar at all? Is it Fish? No, 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 no. Uh, I've, I've been on the show one time. Oh, yeah, he's been on one show with, the, on the old Ray McGuff show. Uh, he was on back uh, when we revealed the uh, the photographs, the illicit photographs of you um, in the mail, mail-to-mail action. Do you remember back in the day? That was a bathhouse, Frank, I'll have you know. And it was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> but do you remember uh, he did the news with you uh, way back, way long time ago? Is it JC? It is. Oh, hey, man. man. See, I didn't have to get into the big clue yet. So, <laughs> yeah. so thank you for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, tell, tell him what the big clue was. The clue was one of your coworkers like to suck my dick a lot. Oh. Oh. <laughs> JC. Too much information. <laughs> that's what that that's who the JC was. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's good to hear uh, it's good to hear from you, man. I know. Get, get, you know. get out and do this. He's like, You wanna come yeah. out? I said, Hell yeah, I do. Yeah, but JC's uh, been away for a while. Um uh, G, JC of E Joe photo mm-hmm. you can hire him up he'll come and take a photo of your family or your friends or the friends of your family you know, any, business anything. or business anything um and uh you want to talk about where, where you've been <laughs> i don't know how to go into it i don't know how to go into it well i've been i've been in prison right you know uh-huh. i got i got three years and i served 22 months and i'm out on good behavior and there's some harmonica playing right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was there much harmonica playing in? Uh, no, I ever had. They had like uh, they had guitars, keyboards, really instruments, uh, trom- you know, like trumpets. I guess you stuff. could buy whatever you. Did they oh, sell yeah. that shit in the store? No, you you can get, you can like order it and get it sent to you, and then you have to have like a sign off for it. And they have like special shit you can buy in there. They're like special Dude, TVs. I and went stuff. to a co- yeah. Well, I had a TV. You bought it from the commissary? No, I had... Well, you can buy a commissary or you can be, like, on, like, a loaner program. Are they I like, was on a loaner <laughs> program now. You're supposed to be in for, like, a year and not get in trouble or whatever. Or you can, like, slide to dude some goodies and get a TV. Right. Yeah. So I slid to do, dude some goodies and got a TV. And <laughs> I got tired of babysitting... Wait, I got wait, tired of babysitting so, people's TVs that would go to the hole. So Morgan like, Freeman hey, was in your prison? <laughs> huh? Morgan Freeman was in your prison. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let me help you out, JC. <laughs> I'm I'm the guy that can get you. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely everybody that can get you something. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you were telling us half a million ways you can prepare fucking Raymond noodles. That's what right. other skills did you learn in in prison? Anything? <laughs> learn how to read. Yeah. You I read? did. I wasn't a big reader. And then, how many books did you read? Do you suppose? I want to say maybe like thirty or forty books. Oh wow. wow. So that's a, that's a good chunk. And then I, I I wrote a lot of stories, and you know I kept busy. So yeah, yeah. Well, what's the craziest fucking thing that happened there? What, uh, the craziest thing that you experienced while you were there? I was out on the yard and walking, listening to my radio, and I come around the loop, and this dude hit the ground. Yeah. And people come up to him, and they're like, "Hey, man, this dude's like seizuring out or something," and had a couple people over by him, and then that was like a couple minutes went went by, and then the CO came out to check him out, and he was out there with him for another five minutes, 
And he's like, oh man, we should probably call the medics. <laughs> yeah. We probably should have called the medics first. Yeah, probably. So the medics took another 15 minutes to get out there. And by the time the medics got there, dude was dead. Yeah, that's a yeah. long time. You can't fuck around. That's a long he was, time. Like, he's blue, and dude was dead. And then the white shirt come out and cleared, cleared the yard, and everybody had to leave. Wow. What did he die of? I don't know if it was like some kind of messed up drugs that they, he was doing yeah. or you know what the what the cover up was, and then then the next craziest thing was uh, an inmate that got beat beat the crap out of in the infirmary. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. he was already hurt. That's the sp- place you're supposed to get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know they they beat the dude to death. Wow. That's crazy, man. <laughs> and that's what. Right and, then, and this two, was like two like things easy, happened on that day. <laughs> this was, this was, <laughs> One, the Boggs easy, never walked this, again. This was the easy, the easy prison too. So, the, where, where was this at, Marion? Mm-hmm. Wow, My sisters le- never laid a finger. On <laughs> did you know? Again. Did you see anybody in there you knew? <laughs> were you like, I know you. Know. I see. <laughs> oh really? He's over there. He was over there. Yeah, I saw him in the CR or at the CRC. And when you yeah. do like when you go there, we'll probably bleep that. We'll probably bleep that name out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. Then, uh, yeah, there's just a few couple different people here and there that I knew. How long were you in there? <clears throat> Twenty two months. Wow, that's a long time, man. Well, do you want to talk about what happened that got you put in there in the first place? Uh. Yeah, I was kind of driving crazy, and yeah. I caused an accident, and, you know, I, I'm fortunate that nobody got hurt that day, you know, and... Yeah, it could have been a bad, you know, bad situation. did a lot of anger anger management and mental health stuff when I was in there, and... But you feel that the system worked for you, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, shit, you're doing a lot of really cool stuff lately. You're but, getting, uh, yeah. you're getting uh, off. as a piece of advice, while you're, uh, you know, if you're ever... Looking for for work, you always say, "I was an employee of the state. <laughs> I was employed by the state for 22 months." That's what you would in a in an interview. They could look it up if they want, but if it's a place that doesn't necessarily do background checks. They make it. You very just said you're employed employed by the out, state, they? and they don't. Yeah, they, they, they can't really press you on that. <clears throat> they make it very hard <laughs> it, once you once you, once you've had to deal with some situation like that to come out and then. Getting back and back into it, man. Like if if they they should help push you into like a career or something, right? Because instead of like everybody just gets fucking blocked, you know. Yeah. Um, like, uh, congratulations to David Miller who just uh, graduated from uh, he got his degree or whatever from over there in Lima, uh, but he thought he had a job and background check come up and fucking some shitty right he regrets doing you know they make, they make it hard yeah I got you know I got an F2 on my on my on my count you know so. <clears throat> yep and it's always gonna be with me but you know I'm just gonna have to you have a lot of support from people around here though like yeah. so so that's a good thing too but <clears throat> let's get into some music here uh, a little wasted potential uh, from Bell Fountain and friends of ours they were just on the last round of horror show we did a live one over there at the beer vault and then I'm going to play some conversion theory uh, right after that we'll be right back Yeah. 
understand that there is constitution. Was no
okay, we're back. <laughs> See how that is? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk about something that happened to me recently. That I, 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 want, I want to know your pers- perspective on this. Uh, from the, you know, It's a social media thing. There's a lot of stupid shit that happens on there all the time. But do you remember when I posted about how unfunny Adam Sandler is? Yeah, <laughs> which I agree that? with you 100%. <laughs> okay, basically all my point of view was that it's fine if you like his old movies or whatever movie, even the new movies, I don't give a fuck. But if you're going to spend money to go watch him fart into a microphone on stage and give him more money when he already goes on TV and says, you know, I just make movies to go on vacation with <laughs> He already comes out and says that to you. And then you're just like, I want to see him sing those stupid ass songs from when I was 13, you know? I understand. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. You're talking like the Sloppy Joe song? Yeah, whatever he does. I don't know. You don't like the Sloppy Joe song? I'm 35, JC. <laughs> I have to let some things go. I'll hold on to Monty you Python. You still sing the Sloppy Joe but, song. But the, the point of the view is, I was trying to make a funny joke. I said, you want to see a baby man fart into a microphone on stage. It was a joke. Well, what happened was, no people posted and they were pissed off and blah, 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 whatever. I don't care. I am an asshole. I'm sorry about that. But uh, someone that my wife is friends with felt the need to tell her uh, just the other night that, uh, <laughs> that I came off like an asshole and whatever and didn't post anything on the thing directly to me which I removed it anyways because I get tired of shit I, I post stuff all the time and then I fucking just delete it because I, it's not worth my time I get fucking focused on it I'm like why am I arguing with someone about this <laughs> <laughs> you know and then I just I kill it so um but they said they basically told on me to my wife and I'm like if they don't want to see my shit and don't have the balls to fucking talk to me in, uh, directly on the fucking post <laughs> I will remove you. I will unfriend you. Now, can you unfriend someone on Facebook and remain cordial with them in real life is my only question. Because I do run into this person from time to time, and I don't really care. I'm not, like, pissed off at him, but it's just an irritating fucking... question. It's a fucking irritating thing to me <laughs> that I can't say... Like, everybody thinks that I can't have an opinion, and I don't, I, I don't want my opinion to be revered or anything, but I want to be able to say something well, and not have to fucking pay consequences well, for it. I, I know from, just from my experience, Frank, that... <laughs> I've had I've had both versions happen to me. I've gotten into arguments on Facebook with close friends who deleted me and told me to go fuck myself and then, you know, six, eight months later they were like, Oh, I'm sorry, that was really stupid and we became friends again. <laughs> and then I've also had people who deleted me off Facebook for one comment and they refused to speak to me in real life. So I don't know. Right. Yeah, it's I think it goes both ways, honestly. I just I, I don't hate this person. But that is a fucking pussy ass thing to say, like to go to my wife and say, "Well, you're, he, you know, he's really the way he interacts on Facebook is really kind of aggressive," or whatever the fucking <laughs> thing you would say. Say it to me. Say it to me, because I, re- I, I, some people aren't like this, but wh- who I am online is who I am offline. So I'm the same fucking person. I'm not different on either one. So if I say something, I would say it to your face. I would say it on a podcast <laughs> to your face. <laughs> I would broadcast my opinion yeah. to you. You have the right to do it too, but for God's sakes, I'm allowed to say Adam Sandler sucks. He fucking does. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Airheads was a good movie. Okay, yeah, I can I get know, behind. I, I, I can honestly I, get behind I, I that. Get, that's a good. That's I get that's exactly what you're saying, though. I. But come on. I should be able to say it. <laughs> if, if he would have stopped like uh, ten years ago, just yeah. stopped. You know, no more movies, or wait a long time before you make another movie. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, he did. He did a bunch of. If all you remember from him is like, oh, Happy Gilmore and he can Billy be, Madison, and think he's like, oh yeah, he's. The, the, he's my problem. Kind of my, funny I guess Saturday my main Night problem Live, isn't even. It's nothing to do with Adam Sandler. <laughs> It's the fact that I should be able to say Adam Sandler sucks without you having such a deep-seated love for the man (laughs) to where you have to tell my wife that it might have been inappropriate, my opinion on it. You know what else? I fucking don't like... I don't like a lot of things. I'm allowed to say it. God damn it, give me venting I'll do you you one better, Frank. You're allowed to say that, and you're allowed to make shit up about him, too. Fuck Adam Sandler. I heard he fucks kids. <laughs> he probably does. 
Oh, and let's get off of this. That's anyways. why all his movies now have kids. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. They do all have children in them. He's got a lot of. <laughs> it's pointing in that direction, right? Um, Sorry. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about your uh, new podcast project, Randy. You got a new podcast project coming I, out. Yeah, right? I, I actually, uh, well, I was going to tell you this uh, privately, but I'll broadcast it as well. I'm going to do two new podcasts actually this month. Oh shit! Yeah. He's on fire. Yeah, the first one is uh, what I'm going to do with a longtime friend of mine. It's called Area 42, and it's going to be uh, us talking about time travel, conspiracy theories, um, you know, like uh, the ancient alien theory stuff, like like things that we found interesting in the weird realm of conspiracy theories in general, and uh, and oh, it's going to be like a 35 minute thing. And that's that's yeah. filming next Wednesday, and then next Thursday I'm filming one uh, with a buddy of mine, uh, uh, Frank. You know him, Jean Paul Mantilla. He's a right, uber yeah. nerd when it comes to B horror movies. So we're gonna do one called Schlockfest, where I go over to his house once go. a month, and he makes me watch the weirdest fucking movie that he loves, and then we're gonna talk about it. So <laughs> yeah, and I've talked to him. I've talked to him about. Um, schlocky uh, cheesy movies before so he's gonna make you watch some yeah shit he told me he's gonna put me through the ringer but he's been wanting to do something uh, with us for a while john paul and yeah he, he he and i had talked about a movie review thing and i'm like they're just too many of that kind of thing yeah, it's it would be stupid to right. do it and he's like well what if you know i had you watch some shitty movie and that i love and then we <laughs> argue about why it's good or bad and i was like i could do that so we'll yeah. we'll see how it That's works if, it, if this one doesn't work out you know we may we, if either one you know don't work out we'll see but i think that they could both be pretty fun so i'm excited about it yeah, yeah. i think i i think that sounds like a good time yeah. you know because that's that's podtastic yeah, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. I, I just made that up that's trademark <laughs> Trade yeah. that'll add a, that'll add in uh, some nice uh very variety to the to the channel uh, all this stuff of course will be on uh zto tv podcasts.podbean.com or just look it up on iTunes, man. ZTO TV. I'd really like one fucking person <laughs> to review something on iTunes. One motherfucker. <laughs> we're, we're, we continuously are getting more and more views um, on Podbean, so just I'm happy about that. it sucks. But, we don't care. But just we literally I, say I, anything. I can't, like, iTunes is what everybody pushes things. And like, it's the fucking most important one. I can't. I don't know why it is. Does everybody have Apple phones? No. I don't know no. anybody except for my no. wife who has an iPhone. I didn't even no, know I that know. Apple still made things. I just, I just <laughs> now got a smartphone. Right. I don't have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we're talking on an old LG Verizon. <laughs> yeah. um, anyways, let's get into some more music. That's I got uh, Electro Cult Circus coming up, and then a live cut that hasn't been released yet from uh, an upcoming Grummy show from Dale. Yeah. So we'll be back.
Drinking through that entire uh, set. Uh, yeah. Those are some good tunes, man. That, that Dale good. Yeah song's uh, amazing. Yeah, we, uh, yeah as spe- uh, speaking of uh, what the fuck am I? What was I? Well, I don't know what I was. Speaking of Gromy Show, I uh. guess. We have one coming up in June. <laughs> Check out the events and all that shit stuff. Uh, that, uh, that was fun. Uh, sports Corner. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's the, sports happening. There is sports <laughs> happening. Uh, we're in round two of the NBA playoffs. Oh, before we get into it, I want to talk about how uh, Ray got drafted for the Browns. Did you see that? <laughs> no, I didn't. That was probably a good pick for them. What round was that? Uh, I think it was 13. Yeah, it was the Cleveland okay. round. I want, to, I want to know how they can afford you, Ray. <laughs> I just say how things. Can they I don't know you? football. They're putting me. They're oh, going to put me in like Rudy in the movie Rudy, right at the very end of one of the games. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. To that. yeah, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I don't even remember how we get started on that, Frank. I, I think I made a post about how Browns fans just seem to – want to go, oh, after the draft, like, they're going to win the fucking Super Bowl all of a sudden. I'm like, guys. Did you win Did you give them a grade, no, they, though? What well, what funny. did you think of it, Ray? Because I know you knew, you know, you at least pay attention. You're a, a Bengals fan like me. Do you think the Browns did anything good? Uh, I know as a Buckeye fan, we all know Baker Mayfield. Right. We don't like no, him. I, I think he's a cocky asshole. Yeah. But, I mean. I think the Browns did exactly it, what they do every year, man. What they do is they, they get a quarterback. <laughs> And they don't think about anything else. They, sure, they grabbed a couple of other good guys, but I would have been stacking my defensive and, and offensive lines up so that the guy that can throw that's going to throw the ball can throw it from his standing position instead of on his ass like every other game. Yeah, that's you know? very, very true. I mean, that's a that's a very in-depth analysis. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, we uh, Bengals we took uh, Billy Price in the first round, yeah. uh, late first round because we don't lose every year like the Browns, because that's their big thing. They lose <laughs> so bad they get the number one pick. <laughs> I thought um, they were going to give yeah, up. But, the, but, but that's we the gotta, thing about the Browns is they fucked that up, too. Yeah, they fucked the draft exactly. up, too. So we, we took an offensive lineman, guy out of Ohio State. Uh, so, you know, I feel pretty good. When you take an offensive lineman in the first round, your team doesn't suck that bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, Because every year the Browns, just they need that guy to save them. Right. You know, every year it's that... Johnny Manziel or the next guy that's might be you this year, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Look, can you throw a fade route? Yeah. All right, then then you're a quarterback. Yeah. And we got uh, this. We'll we'll get to uh, before we jump in. I know you got some NBA business to take care of. Before we get into that, I have one sports thing to bring to the table today, and it's did you see that Buckeye guy? What was it? The Buckeye man or whatever? He signed. That card, like that coach died. One of the Buckeye coaches died, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that Buckeye man or whatever, he's like one of the big fans that dresses up. Yeah, I know who. He, I, I I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking. Do you about. know the story? Yeah. Did you hear it? No. They had like a card that they were signing the the players and stuff for the family, 
and that guy snuck in there and fucking put his little fucking John Hancock on there. It was a big controversy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fucking hilarious. And I just, I just saw that guy was in Kenton not too long ago, and they, it was a whole article about how those fans, the super fans that dress up like their own identity, yeah, are like more concerned about their own image than anything else. It was a whole think piece about it. <laughs> <laughs> did he come in full costume? Yes. Oh, of course he did. Very so. Of course he did. <laughs> Very so. <laughs> he signed he a gun guy. Visit. He could just visit. Like, I'm a normal person. There's no game going on right now. Yeah. I'm the, uh, you guys know I'm the Buckeye even, guy. He, hey, even if he would have signed it, his fucking name would have been cool. He signed it Buckeye guy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's all I have for sports. So let's move into the NBA Finals. Is that where we're at? The <laughs> semifinals. Uh, it's the conference semifinals. There's a game happening on the I know, right we're, now. This we're one, uh, game right now. This one's over with. Uh, uh, Philly lost two to Boston, so Boston's up two to zero on uh, Philly. The winner of that series will play the winner of the Cleveland series. They're up two to nothing on the uh, Toronto Raptors, the baby dinosaurs. <laughs> up, up to nothing, okay. and uh, yeah, about to make the sweep because they go back home to Cleveland for the next two games. So, looking yeah. pretty good. LeBron James is playing like uh, the best player in the world. You know, like he is if, if, playing like LeBron James. I'll tell you what, man. Right. I really, really hope that they win again. Not just for you, because you guys, you know, you're my friend and stuff. But because I want to see those Cleveland fans go fucking bananas again. I saw a dude eat a piece of shit. I still can't get over that. <laughs> he just fucking picked it up and ate it like a candy bar and fucking was this Was this because of a bet? No, like it a, was during that parade, the big parade, uh, everybody walking down the street. He's like, motherfucker, they won. There's a piece of shit. I'm going <laughs> to eat it. And he fucking picked it up and he ate it. <laughs> and then, well, just, how do you catch this stuff? It was on the internet, man. I mean, it was like, a viral how do you video. Even, how, how does this even catch catch your eye? It was a very viral video, yeah. dude. Viral. It was a very it big was deal. Fucking big uh, deal. Cleveland fan <laughs> eats shit. It was the article. It was the. Yeah. I was like, gotta see it. Gotta see it. Gotta watch it. I think you're <laughs> searching <laughs> for it, Frank. You were searching people eating shit. That's no, what eating shit. Cleveland, that's local. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have took anybody eating shit, but local. Yeah. Uh, if, they, if they win again, I, uh, I might shed a tear. Yeah. Probably will, you know, man cry like I did last time. Because yeah. that was the first one. I mean, that was 52 years. Of being pathetic, and it was all erased in one night, one glorious night in in Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> well, anything else for the uh, sports corner there? Are we, are we wrapped up? Uh, baseball season's going on. It's happening. Baseball it happens for happening. for fourteen months, and you know. So hundreds and hundreds we'll talk about that. One. We'll talk about that one in October, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll get to that in the fall. <laughs> So uh, let's go Cleveland Cavaliers. For Cleveland sure. Cavs. Let's eat some shit. <laughs> uh, let's get into some music right now. This is going to be Derek the Fisherman Dunson from an old live event. Uh, he's doing a Bo Burnham cover of Art is Dead. And then we're going to play some more unheard Bromi Show audio from Negative Art Protein. Is dead, David. Complicated. Ooh. So we're not complicated. I can't explain it. Stop screaming, cause he's just a little attention attractor. When he goes up to be a comic or actor, he'll be rewarded for never maturing. And I'm not understanding the learning that every day can't be about him, just other people, you selfish asshole. I must be psychotic, I must be demented. Show has got a budget, and all the poor 
people, way more deserving than the money. Won't budget, cause I wanted my name in lights. When I cut a fat up family of four, for 40 fucking fortnights. 40 fucking fortnights. I am an artist, please God forgive me. I am an artist, please don't revere me. I am an artist, please don't respect me. I am an artist, feel free to correct me. Self-centered artist, self-possessed artist. I am an artist, I am an artist, but I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid, I'm just a kid, kid. A mediocre Adam did. Yeah! I wanted to get that in, sorry. Since since it's in the air right now, Ray, do you think we should give Donald Trump a Nobel Peace Prize or would, oh, what would you recommend? I actually think <laughs> if you if you really think about it, man, the Peace Prize should go to him because he used war tactics to create peace. And isn't that what the Peace Prize yeah. stands for? <laughs> do you get see, Was that sarcastic? I can't whole, tell. I really couldn't tell. This whole it's time sarcasm. I'm thinking if <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm thinking if he may, if he has anything to do with what's happening over there, it's because they're getting ready to fuck us <laughs> naturally. Like they're like this Donald Trump guy really needs to be uh, taken care of, and uh, all of his horrible people. Or or, or <laughs> did uh, what the uh, you know the thing I think they wanted to happen was that he thought that Trump was such a maniac that yeah. like he would actually. <laughs> You know, do what he said he was going to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, how awesome and he's is taking that? Because I ran, I ran did the same thing with the Iran deal. The one Trump said is so bad, yeah. but they were really at the end of the day like, okay, no nukes, we're not going to do that. How? And they were just, you know, the power of being blown up and completely decimated is probably pretty, pretty yeah, big. I mean, how awesome uh, is it it's... that Donald Trump? Out crazy, the craziest person of mm -hmm. all time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I might as well give him a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, he deserves a Peace Prize. I mean, yeah. 
as wonderful a moment as it was, did you watch the video, right? Did everybody watch the video of that where they were stepping back and forth over the oh, border? Did yeah, holding hands. No, I seen that. I seen this. The, the did you, did, were you laughing or were, were you not laughing at that? Because I was laughing because it looked like some like silly little dance. Like it was this? like some silly like. We, yes, we are friends. Yeah. Yes, we are <laughs> friends. Like, yes. Hey, I step on your side and we let's come over here. Yeah. There's some really important <laughs> yeah, shit look, in there, though. I used to yeah. not and, be able to do uh, this, dancing back and forth. Uh, anybody yeah. from Korea that can play in the Olympics, you know, even the Olympics is a big deal. Right. And when if it's North and South Korea together as just one, you know, one team, or if it's them separately or whatever, like that's a big deal. And people that play sports and go over to other countries can see, oh, this is America really doesn't eat babies all the time, <laughs> or whatever that whatever they say, whatever their propaganda is. Like, now, Americans really aren't like this. We, oh, but, well, the you, the you more of that something. we can have, the better. <laughs> you so. just brought something. Uh, there is what is the, the now I might sound ignorant here, but isn't there a fucking Asian country that they have a dog eating festival? Am I am I wrong? <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah, it was uh, somewhere in China, and I think it got canceled. There's definitely a thing. No, oh, it's canceled. This yeah. Year. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, cancel all your plans uh, to go to the dog eating festival. Um, sorry for my cultural ignorance. <laughs> um, anyways, let's get into some more music. Uh, a little, a little bit of Little Pink and some Ghost Town Railroad. A show the age in the city She wears my favorite t-shirt Her face becomes a parrot As I race street cars My heart stops Will my feet move Waiting for the door to close But it never closes I walk around While she takes her steps across it Don't need a picture To remember the moment I keep walking back to her yesterday To call it Now, prettiest death to blue. Its rings near invisible, but gorgeous as herself. It's a wonder how it goes to see. Waiting for the door to close, but it never closes. I walk around while she takes her steps across it. Don't need a picture to remember the moment. I'll keep walking back to her yesterday. Like my reflection 
action being caught in a mirror. I danced with old ladies, I mastered old ships. I wandered out nightly, the Rome on my lips. And off in the distance, a glowing red light. Warning shot fired to stay by my side Them angels, the demons, the nightmare of Lord I spent a whole lifetime that moment with you And the seasons to the change and the leaves to the fall I waited forever still All the best parts, the best parts were you Uh, uh, this is a topic that's in the news right now. Um, cultural appropriation. Uh, did you see the dress where the the girl was going to prom or something like that, and it was like an Asian yeah, dress? Yeah, I, I didn't did find it that? offensive at all. Did you? Did any? Did any of you guys? I thought it was stupid. I'm like, I didn't no. see it. I go, the girl liked the dress. It was What's just a beautiful. <clears throat> well, the the girl responded perfectly. I think she said something like, um, "It's just a fucking dress. I think it's beautiful." It's my prom. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. You guys can piss off, basically, was how she responded to it. Good. Um, yeah, good for her. Good. But, but the thing I don't understand is why you, like, they give people that have, like, white people with dreadlocks shit, cultural appropriation, all this stuff. You see these videos and stuff. Uh, what about, how are the, how is, how is their cultural appropriation in this trans, positive trans world? Because isn't that, like, a sort of an appropriation and how do the two things stand in the same world together? I don't understand it. It's bizarre to me. We're in a trans-positive world with um, pushing forward progressive thoughts uh, across the board on trans people. But also we can't hang with someone having like sharing culture. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. And, I uh, believe that a song was written about it once. Uh, I believe it was... Boys will be boys and boys will be girls. It's a mix, mix, uh, mixed up, messed up, crazy world. Lola, anybody? <laughs> That's true. Lola. <laughs> she walked like a woman and talked like a man, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that um, is the question. But basically, <laughs> my my like, I feel a lot of the time like I get pissed off at both sides of things, uh, and I'm like floating around in the middle because like extremists are everywhere on both sides oh, yeah. and and then i sit here and i'm like well no you're fucking annoying too you <laughs> asshole like i of course i hate nazis but then on the other hand you're fucking annoying too <laughs> <laughs> like, like you guys yeah. are both out there being crazy assholes right. and i'm at home like what the fuck 
Like, yeah. can we just like yeah. chill out and watch some cartoons? And, or could, fucking yeah, movies? yeah, exactly. Like, cartoons. That's a good. That's a good uh, caveat because uh, when you watch cartoons, like a poo. Now that's a thing, and that did, I don't think that came from conservatives. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? Right. I they didn't come from that extreme. That came from the Can't we just all really, have fun and really super and social. Make some jokes? I don't know. Uh, and Justice it's Warriors. Some, I guess. Something like The Simpsons too, where they make fun that, of everything. It makes no sense to point something like that out. They're they're making light of everything in that show. They have for exactly. twenty plus years. Well, that that fucking whole White House correspondence dinner. Yeah. Listen, man. The, uh, she did a great job. Her voice made me want to tear my eyeballs yeah. out. But she was hilarious, and uh, first of all, if you want, if you want people to like pal around and throw some softballs, get fucking Gary from the office. <laughs> he thinks he's funny. He'll stand up there and go, "Oh, Susan's a fucking little bit of a bitch, isn't she?" <laughs> it, it, but if you're gonna hire a comedian who she was on the Daily Show, right? right. She was a writer, like, I believe. Yeah, that notoriously yeah. known for just fucking and, with. The right wing assholes that run uh, our country. Yeah, and <laughs> Norm MacDonald. Go back and watch Norm MacDonald. Oh, it's great. I've watched it a bunch of times. It's there. awesome. And they're comedians, and but Bill Clinton actually had the balls to sit there and take his lumps. And this is a second year in a row that guess who's missing from the White House Correspondents Center? Mm. Of course. Mm. You know, yeah. and that's sad. Like, dude. You, he sat there through a roast, which well, was the sick part about it, guys. A lot worse material, yeah. and he he well, can't take his lumps that, like everybody else. I saw a thing else. that said there's only two presidents that ever missed it. One of them was Trump, and the other one was Reagan, who got shot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Why is that funny? Because uh, Reagan got well, shot. He lived. Just, we all know like, he lived. Well, it's the <laughs> sick part about it too was he didn't just skip the cor- correspondence dinner. He went and had a fucking rally. So it was like he couldn't even take the lumps, like like he was saying. He couldn't even take the lumps at all. He had to go have a fucking rally to make himself feel better about people in another room talking about him. You know what I mean? That's how right. fucking miserable he is as a as a person. Yeah. He is a he. Donald Trump is a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. But um, and he's going to get the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, and he's got to be president again too. Trump twenty twenty. Right? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Um, Anyways, let's get into some more music uh, by some other Trump supporters. We got Voice of God. This is from their uh, last album, their latest album. This isn't even fucking there. unwrapped. I got to get a good picture on it. Good picture on it right here is Voice of God. There, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, and then followed up by the uh, the scratches and a little bit of stand up from Dave Berkey. If you want to see more stand up uh, from our family of friends and weirdos. We have a show on May 20th at the Beer Vault, um, five bucks. All the proceeds go to the comedians. And uh, we will be right back. What's that say? Dog shit. There's a dog shit track on here. Get it through the roof and 
come off cold They show you to the bone Just like the song that you once heard Your identity becomes less clear to see Your edge is getting kind of blurred We all want to go somewhere We don't know what place to hide from our misfortune And this pain comes in burst It just gets worse and worse I think it's time to pull the plug something different here at the end of the episode i've got we've we've started a ohio podcast group uh there's like 20 different people that do podcasts in there but one of them is uh the true crime historian podcast so we're gonna uh, kind of highlight and showcase a, a segment from that and you can check that out i'm sure on all the places you get podcasts itunes and just probably google that term and you can find it i know they're on facebook um but it's a it's a true crime pos, uh, podcast, as it says in the name. So enjoy that, and we'll be back to wrap this episode up. Chicago, Illinois, July 30th, 1916. It was the payday of sin yesterday in the double household of Edgar Foster, 4411 Wallace Street. While his wife, who with her two children lives in the front of the flat, was away, Foster shot and fatally wounded his love mate and killed their son, three years old. Foster, with the two families of which he was the paternal head, occupied an eight-room flat. In the front lived the legal wife and children. In the rear lived Bertha Kubiak and their nameless child. Foster divided his time between the households. Edgar Foster made a bad mess of things. At 10.30 in the morning, the neighbors heard the crackling of revolver shots in the Foster double apartment. They ran to the rear door and found Foster, dazed with heat and the liquor he had drunk, staggering about with a child in his arms. The child had been shot twice, and Foster's shirt was spattered with blood. 
In a bedroom was found the body of Bertha Kubiak. She had been shot and was unconscious. The neighbors called the stockyards police, and a squad of detectives came. A hasty examination by the police developed the strange status of the Foster households. Mrs. Jenny Foster, who is employed in the stockyards, was out. Her two children, Myrtle, 14 years, and Clarence, 10 years, were at school. Foster was still staggering about the rear rooms and muttering to himself in a dazed way. My God, he kept repeating, is my baby going to die? The captain of detectives looked at the child. He is dead, he said. Who did this? I did, said Foster. Captain Coughlin had the wounded woman taken to the county hospital and the body of the child removed to a morgue. Foster was locked up in the stockyard station. Captain Coughlin was of the opinion that liquor and the heat had made the man half demented. Foster seemed unable to make a coherent statement. After he had been given a short rest, Foster told a story that made the hardened police officers gasp. He explained that the child he had killed was his own son by the woman Bertha Kubiak, that he had lived with her in the rear of the Wallace Street apartment, and that his own wife, Mrs. Jenny Foster, 38 years old, and their two children occupy the front four rooms of the same apartment. My boy Raymond isn't dead, Foster kept repeating. He's coming over here. How did it happen, demanded Captain Coughlin. We all lived in the same house, replied Foster dreamily. How did it happen, again demanded the captain. My wife, I mean Bertha, hasn't paid much attention to what I did, began Foster. When I got home at 11 o'clock last night, she wasn't at home. I went to bed. When I got up this morning, she wasn't home. I went to a saloon and got some drinks. Then I got a revolver and went to the house to wait for Bertha. My wife went to work at the yards. Bertha came home at 7 o'clock. I took out my gun and loaded it and said I was going to kill myself. Bertha tried to take the gun away from me, and I began shooting. I don't know whether I shot anyone or not. The captain told him, The woman is shot and the baby is dead. Foster kept muttering, Oh, my boy's coming over here. He'll be here. Captain Coughlin asked, Didn't you shoot your boy? I should say I didn't. Did you shoot the woman? I was shooting my revolver a little. In the meantime, detectives were sent to the restaurant of Morrison Company in the stockyards, and Mrs. Foster was found. She was brought to the station and questioned. Quote, Well, this woman Bertha Kubiak brought it all on herself. She brought it on herself by going out and staying out all night when Foster was so attached to her. She drove him mad with jealousy. I'm going to tell you the truth. It may seem funny to you, but it's true. Five years ago, my husband and I and our two children, Myrtle and Clarence, lived in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Foster was a machinist there. He made good wages. We were happy and contented. Bertha Kubiak, with her gypsy beauty, lived in that town, too. She was a waitress in a Grand Rapids restaurant. She was about 20 years old then. She trusted Foster. Then she awoke to her ruin. Then one night, at the place where she and my husband worked, both sinned, I learned later. My husband was brought up strictly as to morals, being a Methodist minister's son. I never doubted his loyalty to me. While we moved into the country part of town, I suppose my husband was true. When Bertha came to my house some months later with her pitiful tale, I believed her. She said she had become Mrs. Brown and was also soon to become a mother. Her worthless husband had left her and she was penniless. I took her into my house, paid her doctor bills, gave her my best hats and gowns to wear. The baby seemed to be my own and the children were so fond of the child. I pitied her. I took her in. My husband came and went, of course, and he saw Bertha, but he didn't seem to make any fuss about her but I knew he had known her before I did. 
The baby was toddling about when my husband and Bertha came to me, saying that they were ashamed that they were so false to me. They told me Raymond was their child. I refused to believe them, but mercy, how I cried. As they had promised to be square with me, I left them in my Chicago home with my children and came to Chicago for work. My husband gave me a farm in Michigan after that, deeded it to me and our two children. This angered Bertha, and she often told my husband he had done nothing for her and her child. Well, my Myrtle wrote me that Bertha pulled her hair, so I went home. Bertha left us to hunt work. We kept the baby. My husband loved the child. It was Bertha's hold on him. After a year or so, when we settled in Chicago, Bertha followed us. Six months later, Bertha broke down. She made a confession to me. She told me that my husband was the father of her child. My husband later admitted it. Well, for a time the baby had no name, then they called it Raymond Foster. The thought of what Foster had done nearly drove me crazy at first, but then I pitied Bertha, for she had trusted him. When we moved to Chicago three years ago, I let Bertha and her baby come with us. But when we arrived here, I told Foster I wanted nothing more to do with him. For a time, he and Bertha went away. They were down in the neighborhood of the stockyards, and I was in the same section with my boy and my girl. We were not here long when Foster made a proposition. He said he would get an eight-room house so we could all be together and still be apart. He said he would pay the rent and that Myrtle and Clarence and I could have half of the place and Bertha and her baby could have the other. I said that was all right, but I was no longer his wife. He rented the eight-room house on Wallace Street. He and Bertha and the baby moved into the four rooms in the rear and my two children and I moved into the four in the front. For more than two years and a half, we lived that way. The door between our flats was never locked. I never went to see my husband. I was done with him, but he frequently came and played with his two children. I always tried to be good to Bertha. I have been working and supporting myself and my two children. All Foster did was pay the rent. He gave me no money. He made his home with Bertha. I treated her as my sister. I told everyone she was my sister-in-law, the wife of my husband's older brother. She went to church and tried to be nice. The baby had two clean dresses every day. Then I told them I would get a divorce and they could marry and give the baby a name, a real name. I had refused to do this before. Only last night I wrote down the data and we fixed up the papers for the divorce. Bertha would say to me sometimes, I'm not going to marry that old man. My husband is 53 years old. He is 15 years older than I and much older than Bertha. She often said she would be happy to go off and marry and let my husband alone if it was not for the baby. I feel so peaceful about the dead baby now. I know God has a way to save those two souls, Bertha and my husband. I am praying that she may live. I would gladly die to save her and my husband who has done this awful thing. He is the most harmless of men. I can't understand it's not in his nature to kill. I believe he bought the revolver and intended to kill himself, for I heard him shout to Bertha that he was leaving for good, and she answered, Who cares? Lately he has grown jealous. Last night she said she was going to a party. At midnight, my husband was excited, as Bertha had not returned home, and he was in a terrible state of mind the rest of the night until morning. If Bertha had gone on to work as usual, she would have escaped his wrath, but she came home when he was so desperate, then he shot her. A stray bullet killed the baby. He could never have harmed the child. He loved all his children and could not be apart from them even after he had deserted me for Bertha. Unquote. When the police escorted Edgar Foster to Bertha's bedside yesterday, she identified him without a moment's hesitation as the man who shot her. He tried to persuade her to say that he hadn't done the shooting. The woman lapsed into unconsciousness. 
Jenny Foster, the wronged wife, will have to undertake the great sacrifice of the expense of the dead baby's funeral, although she earns but $6 a week and must care for her two own children. It'll take me a year to do it, she said, but I can't let the baby be buried in the potter's field. Bertha Kubiak, the common-law wife of Edgar Foster, died in the county hospital the following day. And we're back again for the for the fucking ending here, guys. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to talk about, Ray? Uh, honestly, that that's it for me. I'm working on. Come on, Ray. Come up with one little thing. <laughs> oh. do it for me. Uh, do it for Jason. I'm going to see uh, Avengers: Infinity War again Sunday. You guys all enjoy that. Have I've you seen, seen it, it twice? I've seen nope. it twice. Have nice. seen it. I, I saw half of it. Uh, I don't know what's happening at all. I've I've seen uh, Avengers and Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, all, all I can so say, I'm ill informed. <laughs> all I can say about it, Ray, is you know everybody's crying about it or whatever. But the still the four main Avengers are still out there. Yeah, it's a comic you book know what movie I mean? too. It's it's a comic book movie that all of the source material I, is already available and printed. Well, I, for. I agree. So, I agree, JC. That uh, they're gonna. There's no way they're gonna leave it the way that they did. So I mean, I don't know what people are upset. Why would about. Uh, when that, and why then, would and then Marvel have, kill all of their franchises? Yeah, and then <laughs> and then and then we have you know like the time Spoiler travel alert. stuff and all. You yeah, know what I mean like. I don't know why everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know. My favorite. But yeah, fucking Quinn, you yeah. know, fucking Quinn. My favorite thing about Frank watching it the other night with his kids was the text messages I kept getting from him where he's like, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me with this shit? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not a big superhero fan uh, at all. Like, I don't. How can you not like this? I don't care. Me and, me and Frank are kind of on the same page on that one. I just don't have any investment in any of them. Good for you guys. You're not going <laughs> to lose. You're not going to lose. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, that, I, I, I think I think that was probably the one of the better things about the movie because I was like, wow, the bad guy actually fucking won I know, I agree. Hell yeah, the, you know what I mean? Like, be yeah, the spoilers the fucking bad guy won. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, it's the it's, first time I've I ever watched I've, a movie and the bad guy actually Scott wins. Scott hasn't seen end. it, you don't care. No, nah, I haven't seen it, I don't <laughs> care. Um, uh, just put, uh, maybe before alert. this, yeah, before this starts, just have a, you know, pause and be like, spoiler I say alert. fuck yeah, that, man. Yeah. If you haven't seen it by now, Let it's too bad. I know, if you haven't figured it out by now, then. Right. Yeah, we're but, we're but, not. Uh... What I said, what I said to the first thing, because I'm sitting there with my kids at the drive-in. We went to the drive-in. First of all, had a half an hour of commercials before a movie starts. When I got kids that are fucking tired at nine and they don't start it until it fucking gets dark, and a half hour commercials later, same. I watched like the same Lunchables commercial <laughs> twice, the same Coors Light commercial twice. Who the fuck? There's not even beer there. You're you're making you're trying to sell beer to a, in a place that doesn't have beer. Um, for, for later. Beer. No, you're not no, allowed to bring. No, you bring your own beer. You pay for it. You no, pay at the gate. It's illegal. You, illegal. you say you say, hey, do you have any outside drink or beverage? Just give me some money, and then you bring it in. Nah, I fucking that. <laughs> they got uptight rules there now, man. They make you tie your hoods down. They got this guy in his orange vest that comes around. It's fucking weird. But uh, regardless, the first thing I sent to Ray was. I, I'm really upset to hear that Iron Man and Captain America aren't on speaking terms anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, Robert Downey Jr. literally said that. We're not on speaking terms anymore. Me and Cap. He calls him Cap. Uh, but, I laughed but, so you know, hard, I'm Frank, when I got that message. I mean, literally <laughs> laughed. Like, I, I'm just like, I'm watching this. And first of all, it's I, I fucking can't. It's too fast for me. I got bad eyes. It's dark. I'm in a fucking drive-in. I'm pretty far away, too. It's just everything's moving so goddamn fast, and it's dark to start with. That You start in the middle of a fucking war that I have no idea who these characters are. I don't know who fucking Thanos is or the other guy. There was another guy. I don't even know his name. I don't know half the people's names in this thing. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm, I'm starting the this other is for the guy. Deep, <laughs> the, I, I, I'm sitting here going, "This is definitely for the deep cut fans." And then I had commented on somebody's post. I'm like, "It seemed like it was." De- the, I'm, I'm like, "I'm glad that comic book fans finally have what they've always wanted, which is movies for comic book fans." And then somebody has said, "I think it's good that they blend things for for like casual viewers." <laughs> also, I'm like, 
Nope. Not at all, because I've seen two fucking movies out of the 17 that led up to this motherfucker, and I had no idea what was happening. <laughs> and I know I know, I know a bit about Spider-Man. I know the things he does, and I know the things <laughs> that the Hulk does, and I know the th- I know what they do, but I don't know what their relationships are. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, but also, for real, guys, if you're crying about, if you actually cried about this movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. You need to get your shit together because right. Marvel is making millions of dollars. I heard a woman who was in um, billions, uh, a woman that was in one of, the, one of these of fucking movies. She was in one. I think she was in Doctor Strange. Uh huh. She was. Uh, she was uh, in a scene where she was wearing a doctor's mask. She didn't have any lines. She did have lines that got cut out, but she ended up getting a residual check for like a hundred thousand dollars for just having her. You know, just being in the movie. She had no lines. <laughs> and, uh, like, that's a lot. If you're paying somebody that's a small role like that that much money, how much are you paying fucking Chris Pratt and fucking Robert Downey Jr.? Oh, Jr. disgusting amount of money. Those guys are making disgusting amounts of money. It's, I mean, it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, just think that this movie has made, Frank, as of today, $800 million. It's going to, well yeah it's made the mo- it's yeah. it hasn't it made the most money out of any yeah, of movie all time ever? it's going to cross a billion dollars by Friday which is unheard of that's it, this movie altogether when it's said and done it will make uh 1.8 1.9 close to 2 billion dollars <laughs> it's crazy crazy man but I'm glad that everybody's having fun with this yeah. shit at least uh, I, I would rather hear people say all the time, all the new superhero thing was awesome. Then what happens when it's a shitty one? Because then everybody's just like, "Wow, oh, boy, Batman sucks" or whatever. And then, that's, that's just nothing. Well, Justice League yeah, was a pile got, of shit. I hated that movie. Just so everybody. Well, DC seems to be failing a lot because that's yeah, all. You DC's mean. horrible. Yeah. Yeah, they had, they uh, they're, they're they spent twenty five million dollars, I think, to uh, erase Henry Cavill's mustache. Yeah. For the reshoots. And they did a terrible job. Oh, it's awful. It's so um, noticeable. It's disgusting. Because that, you can't yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. See, I only know that because I'm a Mission Impossible fan. Yeah. Where they at, where they don't do green screen and are actually out there fucking Tom Cruise flying a motherfucking helicopter. Tom Cruise Not broke his leg screen. on that one, man. Do you see that? And he broke his yeah. leg. But yeah, he, he wouldn't... Uh, Paramount had a deal where he couldn't shave his mustache, so... Uh, they had to digitally remove it, and I've s- I haven't seen the whole movie, but I've seen clips of it's it. It's terrible. With and it's terrible. It looks like his whole face is CGI. It's a, it's one of the worst movies I've seen. I, I mean, just a movie, just, just a how you know slap together film. It's one of the worst ones I've ever seen. I I was shocked at how bad that movie was when I left <laughs> the theater. Oh boy. Well, uh, we should probably wrap things up. Uh, Thanks for listening and watching, guys. Um, any final words? Anybody? Emancipate. Emancipate. It's <laughs> a good one. Well, you know, thanks for having listen me. To Con- yeah, sure. Listen to Kanye's new song, "Lift Yourself." You'll you'll be inspired. Scoop it in, scoop it poop poop, scoop it in. Shit. You are listening to C T O. Radio. The what? Who me? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, a little bit, a little congestion. It's it's that. Yeah, poop, poop, poop. It, it's allergy season for me, so yeah, I get I get all stuffed up. <laughs> yep. Thanks, guys, for having me. It's always fun. JC, it was good talking to you. Take care. I'll talk. To you. <laughs> Will do. I'll, t- I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Uh, Scott, I'm working on that script still, buddy, so just so you know. So, All right, cool. Later, guys.